Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be answering the question, what is a Regista? Jorginho's role in Sari's Chelsea Explained. To make sure, of course, to like that goddamn video and subscribe if you are new. Let's get this party started. A Regista is a deep-lying playmaker who dictates the offensive play of his team. In Italian, Regista means director. Andre Pirlo is the best example of such a player. A player that sits in front of his back four before turning and finding his teammates in advanced areas, using his passing range and vision to dictate the team's offensive play. The attacking moves will originate at the Regista, who will remain the pivot of all the attacking play. Not only is he going to be that pivot, but he is the organisational mastermind of the team, directing them both on and off the ball telling the team where to play the passes to, but also organising players to make runs in behind or into space. The long pass is a key weapon of the Regista. It basically gives him the ability to move the attack, be it from left to right with switching the play, or hitting those forward passes to the striker's or forward's feet to get the tempo of the attack into that final third. Not only Regista has got to use his ability to control the ball really quickly, but one-touch play is another key aspect. Being able to play in and around pressure is key for a Regista to be able to be that pivot of every attacking move. The movement of a Regista is very different around the pitch. When he's in his own defensive third, he uses his ability to move and also his one-touch play to get the attack started. Positioning himself either in between the centre-halves, making a back three, or in front of the centre-halves, using that one-touch play to move their opponents around, then transitioning the attack if the option comes to turn and play forward to his attacking teammates, or alternatively switching the play to uh, at the stronger side, say it's the left-hand side or the right-hand side, dependent on the pressure. When the Regista transitions to the middle of the pitch, his role slightly changes. Yes, he's still going to switch the play from left to right, but his key role now is to find the passes in between the lines, to break the opponent's lines in their medium block, looking for their attacking midfielders or their central midfielders who have advanced. The key role for the Regista in terms of the transition there, not building the attack, but actually being involved in the middle of the pitch. Into the final third again, the Regista's role slightly changes. He looks to get on the ball, looks to play through balls, or getting his teammates into those advanced areas to create a goal. The second assist pass is a trademark of a Regista. Again, you'll frequently see a Regista moving ahead of his central midfield teammates. And that's the beauty of the role. So fluid in possession. Getting into the areas to dictate the play in the right moments. At the base of midfield, in their own defensive third, creating in front of the back four, and then in the final third, getting to attack in midfield. A Regista, a true roaming playmaker. So let's move on to formations. Where does a Regista fit in? Well, it's usually in a three-man midfield, either a 4-4-2 diamond or a 4-3-1-2, or alternatively, a three-man midfield in a 4-3-3. A coach usually has to cover up the defensive flaws of a Regista. Registas are known for their ability on the ball to play the pass, but defensively sometimes they're not as good as they could be. So having someone that can do their defensive running or their defensive work rate in terms of tackles and interceptions is key to getting the best out of this really unique role. Alternatively, you could play a two-man pivot with a guy next to him that's going to sit deep. Again, in a 4-2-3-1, a Regista maybe as a left central midfielder and the you know a destroyer as a right central midfielder. That can also work as well, freeing up all the defensive aspects of his play. Teams work well when they've got wide men with the Regista, so he can use his ability to switch the play and create those 1v1s. Hence why a 4-3-3 is a real new age system that works well to get the best out of a Regista. But also the 3-5-2, with two wing backs on either side that can arguably get further up the pitch than traditional full backs with a three-man defence that's covering them, gives the Regista that ability to sit in defensive midfield and spray the passes left, bring it back and then spray it right. Moving the defence, again a real key to breaking down a deep packed defence, is moving them from left to right, opening up the space in the central areas for your advanced playmakers to get on the ball and create those goals. So let's move on to talk about some great Registas over the ages. First up is got to be Gerson, Brazil 1970. Of course they went on to win the World Cup in a 4-2-4 shape. And he partnered Clodaldo at defensive midfield. Clodaldo was more defensively minded at 20 years old at that time. In terms of Gerson, he had an absolute wand of a left foot. His ability to play passes with the inside of his foot, outside of his foot, switch the attack from left to right was absolutely incredible. And he was arguably the first of his generation in terms of playing as a Regista. He loved the ball from central midfield, left central midfield especially, being left footed, over the top to Jarzinho running in behind, splitting the left back and the left centre back of the opponents. And that was only possible because he had the ability and the passing range to fire that pass in behind, but again pairing a Regista with a more defensively minded central midfielder. Moving further forward, let's talk about Andre Pirlo. Andre Pirlo is the guy that we know about, the modern day Regista. 
did it successfully for Italy, for Juventus and of course AC Milan. The AC Milan team that got the, the Champions League final against Liverpool was an interesting one. With Carlo Ancelotti positioning two ball winners in central midfield, AC Milan had previously lost the last Champions League final to Liverpool and Ancelotti had made some slight tactical changes to get the best out of Pirlo. Pirlo of course being in midfield with Gattuso and Ambrosini, two guys that want to win the ball back. That allowed both Clarence Seedorf and Kaká to play off Inzaghi, the classic Christmas tree. The great things about Pirlo in this system, not only could he get the fullbacks nice and high, again, AC Milan at this time played with attacking fullbacks that would get into that final third, but he could find Inzaghi in behind. Another key thing with the Regista, if they can play with a guy that plays on the last line, a poacher like an Inzaghi that was born offside, really good in terms of that fluidity, picking the ball deep in midfield and looking for those balls over top, a great option. But also with Pirlo finding the likes of Seidoff, drifting from the left wing, and Kaká that used to play more of a central role, Kaká would usually receive it, turn and put the ball into the back of net either through a great sort of bit of skill a dribble or of course a long shot but it was all about Pirlo linking the attack linking it to Inzaghi linking it to the two playmakers but also to the two fullbacks going forward in Carlo Ancelotti's Christmas tree so let's move on to Jorginho at Napoli first up Jorginho at Napoli playing as a regista in Sari's Napoli in terms of the pairing there in midfield, of course, it was Alan Hamzik and Jorginho playing at the base in a three-man midfield. Napoli were the, one of the most attractive sides in European football when Jorginho was there. So quick from front to back, but not in terms of direct passes, in terms of short passes through central midfield. And it was all about Jorginho's control, his ability to roll pressure, to play through pressure, to play around pressure that allowed Napoli to be such an attractive side. But also you've got to remember, Alan did the dogged yards. He was aggressive, he was physical, he'd win the ball back and then simply give it to Jorginho. Jorginho had a great link up with Insignia, who was uh, you know a little bit higher up the pitch on the left-hand side, frequently Insignia would come off the left wing and Jorginho would find him in between the lines with a fantastic pass. Again, a big skill of Regista is to find that pass. And now at Chelsea, Jorginho has already become the hub at Stamford Bridge. Sarri's implemented this sort of 4-3-3 possession-based system and Jorginho is the guy that is completing all those passes. Completed more than any other Chelsea player. Again, the midfield is similar to his midfield at, of course, Napoli. You know, Barkley's playing the Hamzik role, being the playmaker, trying to get into the final third and combine with the front three. And of course, Angulo Kante. Not only is Kante tracking back, he's pressing, he's winning the ball in defensive midfield, central midfield and attacking midfield. But as well with Jorginho at Chelsea, we've already seen the beauty of a uh, Regista, but also the negative sides as well. Take the game recently against Arsenal in the Premier League. Jorginho was the hub of everything for Chelsea, completed more passes than any other player on the pitch. He controlled it at the base, moved it from side to side, uh, tried to disorganise Unai Emery's press. And the big thing as well is when he spotted the pass, he played a through ball. And that was the first goal of the game. Played a great through pass to Marcus Alonso, who made an overlapping run, again pulling back Mkhitaryan, and the ball goes in between the centre half and the covering winger. And again, you know, Chelsea are in. But you get the beauty of that from Jorginho at the base of midfield. Given the space and the time, he's got the appreciation to play the pass with a perfect way to create a goal. And that is what Jorginho is going to do at Chelsea. In terms of the negative sides of obviously playing a Regista, uh, you know, Chelsea saw that against Arsenal. Arsenal creating a lot of opportunities from cutbacks from wide areas. Again, a traditional defensive midfielder is usually be dealing with all those problems in that zone. But given that a Regista is more, you know, an attacking player that's going to get on the ball in those deeper areas, not defensively sound and solid. So I kind of expect maybe Sarri to move his midfield on, go with the Carlo Ancelotti Christmas tree model and go with two guys that can win the ball back and be aggressive. That, of course, Kovacic coming in from Real Madrid could be the perfect guy to partner Angulo Kante in central midfield. But just to round things up, let's talk about the positives and the negatives of a Regista. So the positives of a Regista, of course, can dictate the play if given the time. It's a direct link from defensive midfield to the attackers, plays in a natural hole of a number of systems. We're talking 4-4-2, 4-3-3. 3-5-2 and of course can move the opponents round with his passing range. In terms of the negatives, there's a few of those as well. We've got to talk about them. First up, the lack of defensive awareness from a Regista. Again, they're open to cutbacks if their opponent can create those types of chances. Can also be man-marked, which kills a Regista's game. We've seen someone like Park Ji Sung do a great job against Andre Pirlo in the Champions League in recent years. But also it's a free role within a team, so you've got to give them that freedom to be able to play those passes. Anyway, guys, I've been Statman Dave. What have you guys made of the Regista role in world football? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Get into those comments. Are you a fan of the Regista or are you not? Anyway, guys, make sure, of course, to subscribe if you're new and like that goddamn video. I've been Statman Dave. Over and out. 
If you enjoyed this content, why not check out how Sarri will set up Chelsea this season, or alternatively, my Jorginho scout report. Lots of great information there. But anyway, guys, see you later.